if we think back to that bygone golden era of bodybuilding, you know, and then versus the mass monsters today, today the mass monsters are much bigger. They have much bigger arms, much bigger legs, but their chest pale in comparison to that bygone era. So what's the difference? One of the main differences, back in the day, you look at Arnold, you know, you look at Franco, you can even, you know, Reg Park, first guy to bench press 500 pounds, Arnold started off as a power lifter. Franco, obviously, you know, was a power lifter. Then you look at like Ronnie, let's go a little further in history, so or further forward. You got Ronnie Coleman. Ronnie Coleman, um, he, he, he was a power lifter long before he ever set his foot on the bodybuilding stage. Branch Warren started as a power lifter. Johnny Jackson, we go all these people with amazing chest development started off as some sort of power lifter. So that's one of the major big differences because a lot of people do not chain, train their chest correctly. And what do I mean by that? The chest is composed of a, of, of a scientific study show of about 57 to 65% fast twitch muscle fibers. So what does that, what does that mean? Fast twitch muscle fibers, like we've talked about before, like with hamstrings, things like that, they're gonna react better to heavy weight, high speed contractions, things like that, to produce massive amounts of force. So that's why the, you know, a lot of times a powerlifter that doesn't do any sort of chest isolation work I mean, obviously his physique's nothing compared to a great bodybuilder overall, but he has that chest development, you know, so a lot of times these guys diet down, they have that chest development because they train that way, but 57 to 65% is not 100%. So you still need that metabolic stress work, you still need that pump work. So if we had to choose between going some heavy ass raw pig iron to develop that hood, like they call it in the Crowbar Hotel, AKA prison, um, we would choose heavy weight, low, you know, low, reps eight and less, but we don't gotta choose. So what we wanna do is make that the primary movement is a heavier weight, and then we wanna, um, then we're gonna have to do that pump work too. So you think about, you know, the chest is composed of two separate heads. You have the upper clavicular head, and then you have the sternocostal head, so that's your, you know, your upper fibers, and then you have your lower middle fibers. So the upper fibers, about 19% of your chest. Obviously, the, re the remaining 81% is the middle and lower fibers. You're gonna have to train all that to completely develop your chest. So your upper chest fibers, so to maximally, maximally activate these fibers, you're gonna have to do things that, like, that involve shoulder flexion. So that's gonna be like your incline, you know, press variations with your arms move upward. The middle fibers, those run horizontal. So activation is gonna best be achieved on exercises like the, the flat um, bench press where the arms move horizontal. Then finally you have your lower chest fibers. Those run downwards. So those are best gonna be achieved with exercises that best involve your arms moving downwards. So like that's why dips are so effective for building your chest. So let's use a big word today. We have a dichotomy going on here, okay? So you have one camp, this bodybuilding camp, it's all about feel. These guys worship the almighty pump as their saving grace, okay? And it's all about feel, it's all about pumping, you know, posing, all that kind of stuff. Then you have the other camp. The other camp is um, you're gonna look at the guys that are gonna train, you know, train like a power lifter, eat like a bodybuilder, you're stage ready, okay? And like most things in life, the gray area is gonna be the actual truth of what the matter is, okay? So the point being, on these lighter weights, on movements that are like isolation movements like fly, you need to view it as a contraction with weight in your hand. You are solely focusing on contracting that muscle and making it happen. But when the pig iron gets heavy, you don't need to, it's not all about focusing your ch on your chest at that point. It's gonna be on focusing on executing the movement with perfect technique. So lighter weights, isolation exercises, these are just, you know, contractions with weight in your hand. Focus on that contraction. If you, know, if you don't feel it, kill it. When the weight gets heavy, focus on great execution, great technique, and the weight's heavy enough where the magic's gonna happen, so the truth is in the middle on that. We will be doing a holistic chest workout today. If you have the cojones, we have the method. Blue balls, swollen chesticles, that's what we gave you today. It's a, it's a tough chest workout. So we talked about the composition of the chest, the attachments, things like that. So what we did is we went weight releasers on the bench press, 10 second neighbor, overload over Jay's max, lowering for t a 10 count. On to incline dumbbell press, max reps in 20 seconds. He exceeded our expectations, so we went beyond that. From there, we went on the dumbbell pullover. 
really focusing on the chest contraction 70 seconds straight did not do a rep count just to focus on getting that full on chest contraction finally finished off with a circuit five minutes the band sort of press fly deals neutral to pronated with eight reps eight dips back and forth many times as possible in five minutes so it was not like the highest volume workout ever but it was an annihilation and that's why he can, be, he can hold beer bottles on his chest right now as we speak bodybuilders we always get we always get called out about upper chest you need more upper chest you need more upper chest the beauty behind this workout is that it eliminates reps completely out of it. it you don't have to worry about reps we focus so much on reps we don't think about contraction with the time under tension you're really focusing on the stretch and the contraction the entire time therefore it's going to force those muscle fibers to to actually to recruit those muscle fibers and you're actually going to feel it in your upper chest i only did one incline movement and my upper chest is pumped off of one incline movement trust me bodybuilders try this execution over reps with the with the weight releasers um and the 10 second negative i really really felt it on the 10 second negative we really don't know what my max bench is um obviously a little bit stronger than i thought it was but the beauty behind it is if you notice as i'm coming down i mean you actually see my chest shaking you see my muscle fibers working but when i came down and the, and the weight releases once they released that weight just exploded right back up um same thing you know we took we got good rest but i mean we only did five sets and my chest was already full in five sets you know one five rep, total reps five so total reps you know so that's that's huge you know you talk about saving time and not having enough time to train this fixes that on the chest day um on to the when we went to the incline um dumbbells we actually started with 110s um how long did we go for 20 seconds 20 seconds you know and all i all i did was make sure i controlled the weight down exploded back to the top started with 110s hey felt a little good we decided to go up to 120s did the same thing uh, my body went into my chest went into failure so we did a couple of cheat reps you know just to finish it out no problem done um, and then next we went to the pullovers pullovers which was probably the hardest one even though it was 70 seconds and it was only 40 pounds one thing that Josh uh, made sure that he iterated on is make sure that that my rib cage is higher than my shoulders that way I could actually feel it in my chest if your rib cage is lower than your shoulders and your shoulders are rolled forward or rolled up, you're not you're not going to feel it in your chest. If anything, you're going to feel it more in your lats and probably with your triceps. Um, so one thing, make sure those hips are down and that rib cage is up. Your rib cage should be higher than your shoulders. We could say that's on flies too. If you're having a problem feeling flies, keep that rib cage up. You know, above your shoulders, you're going to feel it in the fly. You're going to feel it in flies. So, because um, here's the thing, just real quick. Um, I know Nick doesn't want me to talk too long, but um, okay, so the bigger you, a muscle group is, the easier it is to feel it work. So like if you got a Ronnie Coleman back, you could do like whatever, like, you know, cheat rows <clears throat> and you're gonna feel it in your back just because you've got so much area there. So a lot of times when you're not feeling it, something in your chest, that means you have like, lack of a better term, less square footage to work with. So when you have less square footage to work with, you need to maximize that square footage in the case of pullovers, flies, that's keeping that rib cage above your shoulders. I mean, so he's, Jay's got pretty good chest development, so he could probably get away with being fairly sloppy and still getting something out of a dumbbell fly, but if you don't, you won't. Yeah, and then uh, we went to the to the bandit, to the standard bandit flies, which I actually really like those. If you notice, I kind of, I slowed it down coming back. I was more, expl more explosive um with the with the squeeze um and then we went into um to dips we did both of them for eight reps but we did it for five minutes non-stop my only rest was when i actually walked from the band to the dips um didn't reach failure but still finished out with the dips did a few extra dips um we went past the five minutes but my chest is full five movements done So what we're doing here is we're focusing on the eccentric portion of the lift. So um, a lot of people, they talk about these eccentric overloads and it's just a big circle jerk. They're doing nothing but, you know, 
pleasure in their own ego because they're not accomplishing a whole lot else. What, because what it does is they go, oh yeah, I slowed the negative down to three seconds or something. I like that because you can feel a contraction better sometimes, but for actually true eccentric overloads, to get those fast twitch fibers to grow, it needs to be like heavy like this. So what will be happening is on the way down, he'll be lowering more, Jay will be lowering more weight than he can lift on the way up. That's an eccentric overload and not just lowering. It's like a tooth and nail fight for ten, a 10 count down. Fight, 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 all that crazy time under tension. Yeah. Then when they come up, he'll blast it up. I mean, it's, so we talked about the pecs, 57 to 65% fast twitch fibers. Fast twitch fibers do quite well with eccentric overloads. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. What we're gonna do here is some time under tension training. So for 20 seconds, Jay, Jay's gonna bust out as many reps as he can on the incline, you're gonna control the negative, do the, do the positive of the portion of the rep forcefully. So you talk about that hypertrophy range, you know, uh, when you talk about the time, you go anywhere these sets 20 to 70 seconds. So like we talked about before, the chest being more in the fast switch into things, we go a little lower time right here. But that what that's gonna enable him to do is a heavier weight. So when he, if, if and when he hits failure, what he does, is instead of like, you know, a ch so say you hit failure on a set of easy curls, you could either do, le you do less range of motion or you could swing it up. So instead of like swinging it up or doing anything crazy or spotting him, all he's gonna do is just continue with less range of motion. So that's one of the best ways to extend a set, quote unquote cheat. Because when you cheat in bodybuilding, the cheating is not, to, cheating, you know, we think of cheating, we think of it's to, to get an unfair advantage, to do less work. The cheating in bodybuilding is the opposite. You're trying to make it harder, you're going beyond failure. So when he hits failure, less range of motion, but more tension on that muscle, making it grow, grow, grow. <laughs> 10 seconds. Perfect. Keep that, keep that rib up, come on, keep that up. There you go, there you go, right there. And squeeze all that as you come over, perfect. And stop. So right there, get that, talk about the, the you know, this being not a, a prominently fast twitch muscle, but also, you know, that 57 to 65%, there's a lot of slow twitch in there too. So we got, we really got a long time under tension there, uh, 70 seconds straight. So I'm told, don't worry about the reps. Don't worry about, get a good stretch. Make sure his rib cage is up above his front delt so you can really feel that. That's a lot of times when people aren't feeling their pecs and you wanna focus that entire contraction on filling your chest, do the work. This is not, I'm gonna move something from point A to point B, blah, blah, blah. This is, I'm gonna, I'm doing the movement to make my chest contract and there happens to be resistance in my hand adding to that effect mentality right there. Focus on the muscle, not in the movement. This is gonna be a circuit, you go know, for five minutes straight. So what he's gonna do is, you know, eight reps on dips, forward lean, we get that forward lean to emphasize your chest development, followed by flies right here. So he's gonna come with a, he's just, you know, bottom negative will be at the supinated grip, then really get, then he's gonna twist up into that pronated grip and really get that internal rotation right there and really just squeeze and, and build that chest. <laughs> Interestingly enough, we talked, you know, in that bygone Arnold golden era, people weighed 50 pounds, sometimes all the way up to 80 pounds less, but they actually had better developed chests because they trained heavier and they had that sort of power building type of background. So this all changed when um, growth hormone, insulin, things like that arrived on the scene. So that's a huge thing to think about, you know, because it's definitely true. And um, I'm not here to criticize people or you know, make fun of their decisions, but you like look at like, you go to like gyms, especially go to, like your more upscale areas, 
you'll see the older dudes on TRT and stuff and getting on, you know, growth hormone all this things. You know, they walked around all pumped up and their shoulders kind of big, arms kind of big. You see them from far away, they turn around, they disappear. They have no chest. You know, so th there's definitely that kind of truth. So this growth hormone, insulin, all that, it may pump up your arms, it may blow up your legs, but it doesn't make those chesticles go booyah.